Oh, here I am live and I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> All right, nobody here yet. So I'm still kind of small, but I will wait for you guys. La la la, waiting. Well, I guess while I wait for you guys to show up, I'll show you some of my jewelry. Okay. So here is one of my necklaces I made. Here's another one. I haven't yet put them up on Etsy. This one I made last night. Ta -da. There we go. Hey, Tony. Good to see you. I was just showing some of my jewelry until somebody showed. <laughs> that way when uh, people watch it later, they can take a peek. How are you doing this fine morning? The sun's finally coming out here. I'll tell you that. It was uh, pretty gray and gloomy. I don't like gray and gloomy. But I went outside for about 10 minutes. I did have a good weekend. We got a lot accomplished this weekend, which is really great. Really great. I hope you had a good weekend. I did some meditation a little while ago, and no kidding, when I was done meditating, the sun just came out. It was like, like a, ah. <laughs> I don't believe in coincidences, so. <laughs> did you look at the title? We're going to be talking about being a human barometer. <laughs> I always made that joke for years, but there's so much truth in it. I always forget how much of a delay there is with chat. I was going to wait a little bit longer to see if anybody else jumps in and then we can get started on our discussion. And um, Tony, if you have headache, stiff neck, but it's working it out. Okay, we'll definitely be praying about that. I'm glad it's working out, uh, like working its way out. That would be um, great if it just would go away in the name of Jesus. But um, what we could do, we could do another little prayer session at the end as well uh, for healing over all of us. And um and if there's anything at all, you or anybody else that may come on, um, have anything that uh, you want to discuss, please share that with me. Or um, if it's something uh, small that you want to discuss today, we can. And um, or I should say, if it's something um, that you think would be a great idea for our next live get together, um, which will be tomorrow, because I really want to try to do it Monday through Friday. Wednesday is up in the air. 
I may do something just a little bit later that day. Um, I get try to get together with two ladies for uh, prayer. Um, we do a lot of intercessory prayer. Um, so if there's any specific requests, yes, prayer is very powerful. It is our weapon. Um, and it also is our, our everything, our healing, you name it. That's how powerful it is. Um, so if you have anything specific, of course, I'm going to be um, with my sisters. Um, if I do get with, together with them Wednesday, I'm going to be praying for all of you that are coming on here um, for your health and and everything, emotional well-being, all of it, because it all affects each other, as we've discussed. Um, but if you have anything specific, maybe a family member or something like that, please let me know. Um, if it's personal and you really do not want to share it publicly, um, you know, you can go ahead and email me at uh, soldieroftheWatch at gmail.com. And I'll make sure that uh, I will bring that with me when I see them. Um, I should be, I, I think I'm going to be able to make it work Wednesday. So I'll just do our live uh, just a little bit later, maybe like after prayer, which is pretty awesome because I'll probably be glowing like anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say after I've had a, a session of prayer with my ladies. It's it's so uh, powerful. So, um, and then uh, and then I'll just once I come back, I'll just get on live. So it may be like around twelve ish instead of ten ish that day. Um, well, I'm going to probably go ahead and get started. Uh, so typically, uh, being a human barometer, <laughs> and what my um, title is saying. And, and I'm sure, Tony, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so when uh, bad weather's coming, it could be a bright and sunny day and you'll just all of a sudden start feeling like achingness or maybe you'll get a migraine or um, maybe your sinuses act up or uh, if you have fibromyalgia or other kind of conditions that cause pain. Oh, okay. Uh, hold up on that thought then. Um, my email again is soldier of the watch at gmail.com. So um, your body may feel achy, maybe um, nerve pain will uh, act up or or whatever. Uh, people with arthritis, they may start having, like if they have arthritis in their knee, they may have throbbing in their knee. Um, something like that. You know what I mean? So it's like your body's way of saying, knock, knock, something's coming. Um, and then once, say a thunderstorm comes and the, and, and the thunderstorm you know, just letting loose lightning and thunder and all that wonderful stuff that comes with it, you know, then it's almost like your body has a release. It's just like, a whoosh. so it's like this pressure that builds up inside you and then boom, releases once the weather comes. And there's like different um, stuff that actually can happen uh, with different types of weather. So you may feel one way with you know, depending on the conditions that you have with snow and then maybe something completely different with say a severe thunderstorm. Okay. Or just plain old rain. Uh, typically when it's like going to be a rainy day all day, I'm usually just miserable the whole day. I'm hoping to change that. <laughs> so before I start going into, um, I found an article that I like that I wanted to share with you um, about how changes in barom barometric pressure has an effect on one's body. Yeah. So uh, any of us that suffer with any type of chronic pain, chronic illness, we totally get the whole weather phenomenon. <laughs> So I think sometimes I've seen several memes like this. We as human beings, um, our bodies probably are the best weather forecast out there. The heck with the weatherman because the weatherman don't get it right. Maybe if he was more or she in tune with their bodies, <laughs> they would know. <laughs> because the, uh, but we also know that a lot of that's controlled anyway, right? So, 
Um, before I get into that article, I did want to share with you, um, like I said, I had gone out and um, I had moved my, I had a hammock swing up in my bedroom and I moved it to the front porch and yeah, I feel it through my joints too. Um, and I moved it to the front porch and I lit some incense and I put on this uh, video, which I'll put the link in the details uh, once this live is um uh, goes up. I uh, will go ahead and uh, do my editing and, and I'll put the um, link in there if you're interested or anybody's interested. Um, it was a 10 minute self-guided meditation. And let me tell you, I feel so relaxed. It felt so good. I actually was receiving some like visions, which was great. A lot of times I'll get little flashes like that when I'm praying with my girls. Um, because, you know, as the word says, two or more gathered together, there he is. Um, so uh, the, the presence of the Father is so great. Um, the Holy Spirit. And it's, whoo, it's great when the three of us get together. Um, but this morning, it was just, wow, amazing. Um, and that 10 minutes went by so darn fast. I could have just been like that for like ever. Um, yeah. So I think that um, if we were to do this more often, I mean, several times a day would be really wonderful, but not everybody has that kind of time. But even if you took like a minute or two just to do some, you know, close your eyes and do some deep breathing, um, I think that would make such a difference. Um in anybody, no matter if they're suffering through any type of chronic illness or not. But particularly, I'm talking about us who do suffer with chronic illness, that um, if we took that time to do that, imagine how much healing uh, would come over our body. I mean, I already feel pretty good um, spiritually and emotionally just from that little bit of time. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness, if I continue, because you guys are walking this journey with me, if I continue uh, to do this, which I am, uh, I know that great things are going to happen. I am feeling really positive about it. I'm excited about it. I want to be completely healed and I'm claiming it in the name of Yeshua, uh, the Christ who lives and dwells in us. Don't forget, we have the kingdom in us. Those who are in Christ, we have the kingdom within us. That makes us so powerful in him is not even funny. So we have to we have to remember to walk in victory because it's already been won. Regardless if we're waiting for his thousand year reign here, it is already been won with a sacrifice. So, you know, we need to be walking in victory and not in defeat. I don't care what the elite are doing and, and all their plans that they have. They've already lost. They've lost the battle, period. So, yes, praise our Father because our Father is so good. Our Father Creator is everything. He's the air we breathe. He is the healing properties that overwhelm our bodies in such a beautiful light and and good great things are going to happen guys great things are going to happen so we're just going to stand in the victory and we're going to claim it so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to uh go into this article i don't want to keep you guys too long today and i do want to open the floor um as of right now it's just me and tony and that's cool um but i'm sure we'll have some people show up uh you know whether it's in, in midway or towards the end but i, I want to be able to open the floor uh for any questions or um anything that you want to discuss i mean i can look up some stuff whatever we need to do um all right so how changes in barometric um pressure can affect the human body. So um, this article, in case you want to look it up, and I will put it in the detail screen, um, is www.m as in Mary, n as in November, n as in November.com. And it's under the health 
fitness, well-being uh, blogs, how change changes barometric pressure affect your body. So in it, it says, you know, it gives you a little like, hey, do you remember when your grandma used to say she knew a storm was coming because she could feel it in her bones? So what they're saying is, is that it turns out that she may have not been as crazy as you thought. Well, we know that as people who suffer with chronic pain and, and stuff. So um, changes in barometric pressure that accompany like storms and shifts in weather patterns, they affect our bodies. And so many people are more sensitive to those um, that, you know, than others, you know, it may not affect them as much as it may affect those of us that, and they've said that fibromyalgia, we are just a lot more sensitive to uh, pain and things. Um, although it's been indicated as a possible cause uh, for everything from changes in blood pressure to an increase in joint pain, it can be difficult to pinpoint barometric pressure changes as the definite uh, cause for these issues when so many other atmospheric changes like temperature, precipitation, and wind speed and direction often accompany shifts in weather. Um, they're saying that still enough people experience symptoms uh, when this barometric pressure changes. So it's worth noting. And also, um, they're gonna we're going to look here at some of the ways that changes in the atmospheric pressure might affect our bodies. So um, the first thing they go over is blood pressure. So just as its name implies, our blood moves through our body using a pressure system created by the heart. I mean, we really truly um, think about the mechanical works of our bodies and, and shoot. If you were just to look at a, a, a strand of DNA, that how complex it is. How can you not believe that we have a divine creator, you know? So um, it makes sense that this pressure would be affected by the pressure around us. Um, according to a bi biometeorologist, her name is Jennifer Vanos. Um, she has a PhD. When the barometric pressure drops, okay, so does your blood pressure. Have you ever like felt like where you get kind of like dizzy? Um, especially, I know during times of bad weather or approaching bad weather, um, if I am like leaning forward and then I come up a little quick, I'll get like that vertigo. Um, in fact, I believe that's exactly what caused me to fracture my foot because I got vertigo while I was standing on the chair and I lost my balance. Um, so, you know, when it drops, your blood pressure drops. So for, for some, this might mean a feeling of that dizziness that I was saying and, and even blurred vision. Um, and let me just come over to you guys real quick, just in case... Hey, Christy, it's okay. You're not that late. We just started. So as you can see in the title, um, we are talking about the effect of barometric pressure on our bodies and um, the different things that it can affect. And um, and we're not crazy. It really does. <laughs> but, you know, when you think of the earth as a whole, it, it's kind of like, a, a, well, we know that the earth, everything around us is energy and energy cannot be destroyed, right? So when you think of the the earth, it's this big ball of energy, right? So, and we're a big ball of energy too, <laughs> maybe not quite as big, but we're all part of that. So I think, you know, some of us are just a little bit more sensitive to it than others. And I really truly believe that, um, especially as fibromyalgia or as spoonies rather, um, I think in a way it's, I don't want to say fibromyalgia is a gift because it's not, but in a way it's a gift to be highly sensitive to things around us. It's just a matter of us being able to control that. Um, or being able to get a, a grip on it and handle on it. Um, it. It's almost like we have a built-in warning system. 
<laughs> it's neither the whole fight and flight thing, um, like being a live nerve. But we know before we even like it's sunny right now. Now, if I have bad weather coming today, I may feel pretty crappy. And it doesn't make sense because you're like, well, it's just so sunny and beautiful outside. Why am I feeling like it's going to be pouring raining because uh, when I look and check, oh, look at that chance of rain. How about that one? <laughs> but as I was saying to Tony earlier, um, and anybody that's going to be watching this later, um, there's like this great release though. So when you have this big storm approaching and it finally gets here and it's letting loose, it uh, it's almost like, I know with myself, Sometimes I may just feel crappy all day, but if it's a pretty good storm, it's like a, you know, one of those big ones that come in, shake the rooftops kind of thing. And then, and then goes, it's like, you feel this huge release. It's just like, whoa, out, but the pressure beforehand is so great. You're just absolutely miserable. And, and see, it's normal. I mean, that's like, they they, they've done scientific studies it is a fact. Some people truly can feel this barometric pressure. Others may just not be, you know, they may not notice things, or maybe they're just in such good health that they're lucky and that stuff doesn't happen. Um, but I mean, it can be down to ringing in your ears and things like that as well that they haven't listed in this article. Yes, exactly, Christy. And that's exactly what they were talking about. Um, I'm not sure when you jumped in, but we have gone over um, blood pressure. So, you know, your heart, your, you have a pressurized system inside your body as the uh, heart is pumping that blood through your body. So when you're getting atmospheric pressure, you know, naturally it's going to affect the pressure within you as well. So the next one is headaches. This is a big one that happens to me. Um, in an interview with the New York Times, Dr. Matthew Fink, neurologist in chief at New York Presbyterian Hospital, um, while Cornell Me Medical Center explained that low barometric pressure can cause headaches or migraines by creating a pressure difference between the atmosphere and the air filled sinuses. So as I had said earlier, it can affect um, the sinuses as well. So a lot of times I'll have some sinus issues before it's going to rain. And I also will get um, headaches or at the worst migraines, all depending on how the pressure is. Uh, the problem can be exasperated uh, when the sinuses are congested or blocked for any reason. Uh, my rheumatologist recently told me to get a neti pot. Um, uh, to clear out the sinuses. I know that we have got like a ridiculous amount of pollen right now, tree pollen. Um, so, you know, that's not going to help matters either. Um, in a study published in the Journal of Internal Medicine, uh, researchers asked migraine patients to keep a headache diary for a year, uh, one year. And after comparing these diaries with the barometric pressure changes noted at the nearby weather station, they found a direct correlation between lower atmospheric pressure and onset and duration of migraines. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, right? <laughs> Their report concluded that barometric pressure change can be one of the exasperating factors of migraine headaches. So there you go. I could have told them that without having to do that study. <laughs> and I got to let one of my dogs in. Bear with me. Or both of them. Let's see. Come on, baby. You want to say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. Hey, guys. This is Ozzy. Say, say hi, Ozzy. This is my neurotic mess. We got him when I was at the starts of, you know, uh, when I was just got out of work, going out of work because of the pain and everything. So I think he might be neurotic because of me. <laughs> but I love this little boy. Mm, his name is Ozzy Malmstein Wild. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay, so 
the next one is joint. So this, this is definitely up our territory here, right? So let's see here. Um, joint pain. Researchers at the Tufts New England Medical Center in Boston surveyed 200 patients with knee osteoarthritis, and they found, how about this one, a link between changes in barometric pressure and ambient temperature and changes in knee pain severity. So it's not clear why a falling barometer would exasperate joint pain and arthritis, but um, according to them, studies such as this one confirm that they do. Um, it could be that barometric pressure affects the viscosity of the fluid that lines the joint sacs, or it could be that it triggers the pain responses in the nerve endings of the joint. Either way, it's what your grandma has always been saying for years. This is what they're saying. Some people feel pain in their joints when a storm is approaching, right? We all know this. <laughs> we know we're not crazy. Blood sugar, okay? So my husband, he's a diabetic. Um, diabetics will have more trouble. And I'm going to have to pay attention to this one. I'm sorry, my Roddy back there is Ozzy. Knock your crud off. 20-pound dog, and you are trying to uh, aggravate the one, the Rottweiler. Are you dumb? Go, go, go. Anyway, he has no sense. Um, so I, I, I'm going to have to share this one with my husband because I never even thought about the blood sugar, but it makes total sense. So what they say here, um, during cold fronts, diabetics are, you know, they'll have more trouble controlling their blood sugar. Um, and this was uh, Vanos or Vanos. Um, it makes me think of Thanos from uh, Infinity Wars. <laughs> um, what a company, uh, and, and then it says, and what accompanies cold fronts? You guessed it, changes in barometric pressure. So according to Venus, uh, blood viscosity or thickness increases during cold fronts, making it more difficult to keep blood sugar at stable levels. Um, diabetics who use an insulin pump to control sugar levels should also be careful. My husband doesn't use a pump. Um, American Diabetes Association conducted a study on the relationship between the effectiveness of insulin pumps with variations in air pressure and found that decreases in air pressure may cause trapped air in the pump to form small bubbles. Oh, that affect the delivery of insulin and the amount actually being delivered. That doesn't sound very safe. Small bubbles. That can't be good. Um, while this study focused on the changes in atmospheric pressure that occur with air travel, it's still worth noting that sudden drops in barometric pressure could affect the effectiveness of your insulin pump. I am so grateful that my husband is not having to use an insulin pump. So that is it for that article. I'm sure there's like several more out that, but out there, but you know, like I said before, this isn't something new for us uh, spoonies, is it, right? So um, my husband's got to take pills too, Tony. And now they put them on this other medicine that I'm not exactly too happy about. Uh, because it actually apparently can cause gangrene in uh, their private area. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my husband's too young to be worrying about that stuff. I think anybody shouldn't have to worry about that stuff. Um, our doctor, she, um, well, I don't like her very much. I mean, I don't like how she is. Let's put it that way. I don't really like saying I don't like somebody, but I really, I, I don't like the way she does things. We had a really awesome, and I know I said this before, a uh, nurse practitioner that worked under her that we've seen for, gosh, maybe nine, 10 years. She knew us. I mean, she hugged us. Uh, we were like family. And, uh, and all of a sudden she's not there anymore and they won't tell us anything. And I can't find her on the internet, nothing. Hi, Allie. 
We are talking about barometric pressure and effects on the body. I just went through an article. I'll leave the link in the details so you'll see it. Yo, know, my husband, um, Christy, he's got a lot of health problems and he works super hard. I am very grateful for the strong man that he is. Um, he not only has di uh, diabetes, um, but sometimes he goes through flares of diverticulitis. Um, he has a fatty liver and he's not a drinker, but the diabetes causes it. Um, although recently his levels, his labs were really good. So I'm super, super happy about that. Um, uh, so, you know, he, he's got different stuff. He's also got asthma, like really bad asthma he's had since he was a kid. Um, pulmonologist said that he only uses 60% of his lungs. And so his body's actually acclimated <laughs> to it. Um, my husband, he had surgery on his shoulder cause he tore his rotator cuff at work and he didn't have use of his shoulder <laughs> or use of his hand because his hand was fractured. So let's just say I had to take care of him for a while. And at the same time, my mom had gone in the hospital. Uh, so it was like, whoa, shoot. I'll tell you, if I didn't have the Lord, I don't know how I would have gotten through it. Um, our father in heaven is amazing. Uh, but um, anyway, that man, because of the fatty liver, he can't take a lot of medication. Um, it, it it, his liver doesn't process it well. So every pain pill he took, he got sick. Uh, so he couldn't take any pain pills. It stunk for him. And um, he basically went through if, and shoulder surgery and the physical therapy afterward. I mean, it's months of healing. Um, it is very painful. Uh, one of the most painful surgeries. Um and he, or at recoveries, I should say. Um, and he wasn't able to take any pain medicine. Uh, so I have huge respect for my husband because that man can take some pain because I don't know how he got through it. It is just like whoa, craziness. Um, he's, he's, he's a great man. I, I have a good, good, really good husband. Um, but, uh, the only time I can call him a big baby is when he gets sick. <laughs> but when it comes to pain, he also has four old compression fractures in his back. And he has a disc that's actually cr crumbled a bit. And um, there's pieces in there. Um, he's got uh, her real bad herniated discs and everything. And he gets up each and every day and goes to work. I don't know how he does it. I really don't. But... Um, he is a great provider for our house and um, a good support. So I'm, I'm very blessed. Um, I, yeah, Christy, I have no faith in the medical community whatsoever. None. I do not like um, the way Dr. Carlson does things. Um, my husband had to see her today and her medical assistant really doesn't know what she's doing either. Um, I, I mean, I really hate to talk poorly, but you know, they have to be certified here in North Carolina to be a medical assistant. And I think it's really important to know how to do a blood pressure for one, both me and my husband were EMTs. So we know how to do it. I also went to school, uh, for skilled clinical, uh, technician. So I can do EKGs, phlebotomy and medical assistant stuff. So I tend to be very like annoyed when I see somebody do a blood pressure and then like let all the air out at once. There's no way you got a reading. You just made up my blood pressure and that's not cool. <laughs> so I have a problem with that. And I also have a problem with today. My husband's lost a ton of weight because of his diabetes and he's gone down from a size 40 in pants to a size uh, 34, just about. And she did his waist measurements today and said a 41. And my husband said, uh, no, that's wrong. And she says, it is what it is. And just started laughing. Excuse me, I'll tell you what is what it, you know, it is what it is. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're gonna have to find a new one. Um, so my, 
uh, what was I going to say? Let's see, woo, gone. I guess it wasn't important. I just, I'm not really thrilled with this doctor. So, and you know, my husband reads that this, the, the medication they put him on, he does this once a week injection. And then he also has a pill he takes that can cause, he found out it can cause the gangrene in the private area. He says something to our doctor bound. She goes, Oh, that's not true. Seriously. Uh, this was, it, this was like a, a legit site. I can't remember where it was that he saw this. And so they're so controlled by big pharma. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure I just said a word that gets you targeted, but guess what? Cause I'm a small channel. Nobody's really seeing my channel anyway. So go ahead and target me YouTube. I don't care. Um, so anyway, it's the problem. Everything's just controlled by medications. What medicine can we put you on now? What kind of drug can we put into you to poison your system and make you sicker? I mean, people would go on the antidepressants and I'm on an antidepressant. Luckily, this one didn't seem to cause me a lot of side effects, but it's one of many pills I'd like to get off of. Um, but they cause side effects, you know, like I know in the past when I was dealing with really bad um, depression, you know, they give you this medication and the medication makes you suicidal or it causes anxiety, um, severe dry mouth and maybe some uh, bowel issues or anything else. And next thing you know, you're having to take a pill for the side effects you received from this medication. And it's nothing but a downward spiral. It's ridiculous. I'm not okay with that. I really want to go natural. Um, so Christy and Allie, uh, cause you missed the beginning part and that's okay. Just play it again. If you want to watch, um, I had, uh, gone outside. We had moved my hammock from upstairs to the front porch and I love listening to the birds outside. Now I don't like when they make their little nests on my front porch though, and put poop down the, the, the beams of my porch, but they sound pretty out there. I had a morning dove on my roof yesterday. Oh, no. You know what? It wasn't a morning dove. Gosh. Well, if you can't make fun of yourself. I thought it was a morning dove, but it was actually a, um, uh, uh, what are they called? Mockingbird up there. Um, he was pretty, but I, I love birds. I think birds are just, they just, the uh, they're singing. It's so pretty and stuff. And I like to listen to it, but um, I'm going to be putting in the details screen in case you're interested, but you know that I've been sharing with you guys that I'm doing some changes in my life because I'm claiming healing over my body and I'm going to do whatever it takes to be better and to be more connected to our father in heaven. I want to be so connected to him that people, you know, in, in the word, Jesus, you know, the woman who was bleeding, right? She knew all she had to do was touch his garment and she would be healed. Imagine that power emanating off of Jesus. We remember Jesus told his disciples that we would do greater things than he. And we know what greater things he did, right? Amen. So I want to be more like Jesus. I want to have the kingdom that's within us shown from me. I want, I want people to see it. I want people to be near me. And I remember this one time I just got done praying in the car. This was years ago. And a good friend of mine who, who was killed on her way to work, her name was um, Kathy Booth. Um, one of the most beautiful people I know um, or knew. And um, she came over and gave me a hug and went, oh my goodness, I could feel the Holy Spirit all over you. It's just like electricity. That's the truth. I've um, had that with another friend of mine, Dee Dee. She it was in church and she said, oh my goodness, I can feel the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Guys, that's in us. It's within us. And when we are exercising our faith, exercising, um, you know, our walk with 
Christ daily, right? And we have that time and we just sit to meditate. Sometimes it's good just to sit there in silence. And this is the times that you can hear his still small voice. And so this morning I went out, I, I put this video on. It was um, uh, uh, helps guide you in meditation. And it's just deep breathing and, um, you know, getting in touch um, with the Holy Spirit and, 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 and stuff like that. And I will tell you that 10 minutes went by so fast. It didn't even seem like it was 10 minutes. I felt so relaxed. I still feel relaxed. I f yet energized, which, whoa, for somebody with fibromyalgia, that's a big deal. <laughs> Especially since I woke up extremely tired, like I didn't sleep. Typical, right? Um, but I totally suggest it, guys. Um, so right now, uh, I could talk forever because I'm home here all alone and don't really have any contact with people. So, but I don't want to keep you guys here forever because we all have a life somehow, some way, right? Um, I want to leave the floor open to you guys. So I'm going to be looking right now in your comments. Um, if there's anything you guys want to discuss, um, if you have a prayer request, I do want to close our session with some deep breathing and um, um, some prayer. Okay. And I think maybe one day this week, we might have some spontaneous worship. I'll pull out my guitar. Um, so uh, let's see what you guys got going on here. All righty. Oh, you live in the woods. So, you know, we were talking about moving and now we've decided to stay in our home because we really love our home. Um, I really wanted to live near the woods and stuff. Um, so did my husband, but you know, we really like it here. So the only thing that bothers me is we do have high tension wires in the back of my house. Um, and it probably has a lot to do with my issues. Um, so that's, that's the hard part, but we're in a seller's market and there's nothing out there as of right now that is going to be good enough for us because of how much we love our house. Um, let's see. Yes, Christ is in us. I love Derek Bros. Love Derek Bros. I sent him an email um, last night, actually, because I have some questions in regards to, um, you know, in the end days, uh, the Bible says about the one world religion and everything. And so I just needed to see what his, um, his thoughts are on that. Um, I'm sure it has probably a lot to do with the key word there, which is religion. Um, religion's man-made. Religion is actually what shackles us uh, to this earth and keeps us from truly, truly getting in touch with the Father. Here comes Chubbs. All right. That's what we, we call Riley. She's she a chubby little girl. <laughs> Um, so, uh, let's see what else. Yeah. So I just wanted to see what his thoughts were, um, on that. And I'm thinking that's probably what he's going to talk about is the, you know, uh, the difference with having the father in us compared to like this whole one world religion thing is it, first of all, it's religion. It's not relationship. So, um, it's truly, I agree with you, Christy. Um, truly how we share the gospel and be a witness to others is by abiding in the Father. Um, it's like that scripture uh, about the, I am the vine and you are the branches. And, uh, you know, if, oh, I listen to Naughty Beaver too. I didn't get him at first until I started watching Derek Bros. <laughs> when I started watching Derek Bros., and then went back and started listening to Naughty Beaver. I got him. <laughs> I ain't right. I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, I wish I could remember that vine scripture. But um, it, it says, he who abides in me, you know, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, I, I do. I play the guitar um, and I sing. 
Uh, singing is probably more my stronger suit, but uh, yeah, I play decent enough with the guitar to to lead, you know, in, uh, in worship. So, um, and let's see here. Yeah, home is the best where that may be. I tell you, I have a great home. I have a great family. I have. I think that's something that's important for us to do is just remember all the blessings that we have because it's so easy for us to be, uh, you know, drawn in the downward spiral of depression when we're focusing on all the things bad that's going on with us, like pain and stuff like that, which, you know, we're going to have our, what I like to call for me, a pity party day. And I think we're entitled to it occasionally because um, when we have those pity party days, those are great days for us to see how much better it can be. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, in Adam's channel, you know, I will like be so behind on videos because I am subscribed to so many people's channels. So a lot of times I'll jump in and like, like their video just to show my support. Cause I know as a YouTuber, how hard it is. Um, and, uh, but I will not miss one single show of Adams. I watch every show. Um, I do have to finish watching, uh, yesterday's I had stayed up. Saturday night because I intended to try to call in, but he ended up not going on until I think like two o'clock in the morning. I swore he said that he was going to go on around 6 PM. Um, it was the night, the, the show the night before, and it would be like nine or 10 Eastern time. I think it's supposed to be 10 um, Eastern time. I don't know. I must've been hearing things because I waited till about 11 o'clock my time and he never came on. So I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. He, he'd be late for his own funeral. <laughs> okay. So we're definitely going to be praying for uh, good health and definitely more energy to do what we got to do because um, energy is important. And, and we want real energy. We don't want the, the fake energy that coffee gives you, that quick little boost that makes you drag later on. Um, and uh, the three days, yes, the three days of night and darkness, Tony. Mm -hmm. Plus the seven no high laws. Yes, that's how I found Derek Rose, actually. Um, I was led to his channel about the Noahide laws because somebody had had called in and mentioned that to Adam. And anytime when people say, hey, check this out, that's how I found Jacob Israel because um, Adam was talking about Jacob Israel. Um, and he's actually what started me to really awakening. I thought I was awoke, you know, awake and apparently not so much. <laughs> So um, start listening to Jacob Israel and stuff. And what I could say about him other than his energy is just like fantastic. But to hear when he was talking about um, his testimony um, with Crohn's disease and stuff like that and how debilitating it was and that he had to make changes in his life really inspired me to do that. So that's why I'm here today doing, you know, talking to you guys about this and all. Um, and then here to come find out he was on, if you haven't seen it, um, if you go through Derek Burr's videos, he had, I think it was back in November of last year, he had, um, Jacob on his show. And I was like, Oh my gosh, both of them. I love those guys. I'm getting to watch them together. It's just so awesome, you know? And, um, and Derek, uh, Derek Burroughs and his wife, when they did the seven Noah, um, was it the Noah high laws? Uh, that freaked me out. I'm going to be honest. It freaked me out. But then what it did was it made me want to look into things more. And then what that did was it led me to, listening and watching his videos and, you know, and I'll tell you what, I went through some grief with things because my eyes were opened. Um, and I felt like a lot of stuff that I thought I knew just shattered to pieces, but I think it, no, I know it was a good thing. Um, 
because we can definitely get misled by dogma and um, manly teachings um, in the church itself because you your guards down. You're like, you know, okay, they're not going to teach me anything wrong. But, you know, I believe it's in second Thessalonians, I want to say, um, where the, the men that were listening to the messages would go back and check the scriptures for themselves. And that's really important for us. Even if it's a pastor delivering a message, we really should be checking the scriptures for ourselves because anybody can, whether it's intentional or not intentional, uh, lead people astray from the truth, you know? Um, it's really easy to take scripture and twist it to make it what you want it to be. And sometimes we can do that without realizing that we're doing it too. That's why it's so important for us to be really connected to the Father, to really be relying on the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us, um, and to really know His voice. Because we know that the enemy comes to, you know, he, he's on the prowl. He comes to, to destroy everything. He comes to steal everything. You plan a word and he comes over and grabs it and steals it away. I mean, look what he's done to the Bible, you know? And um, yes, that's exactly how it felt for me, Tony. It was like a massive overload dump. <laughs> and I remember this one day, I just started crying, but it needed to happen. I just started crying going, oh, Father, help me because I need to know what is the truth, what isn't the truth. Um, and I'll tell you what, it's made me super, super hungry. And I'm, I'm studying a book called, um, let me see. I'm going to pull it up real quick because like I can't remember the name. I'm like looking into Sumerian history and stuff because, you know, Sumerian history follows the Bible. I mean, it's like right on. Um, but you can see where some stuff has been messed with. Um, and that is not where I want to go. Let me see here. Bookmarks. Bear with me, guys. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Of course, I can't find it. Well, I don't know if you guys watch Leak Project, but I had heard about this book on Leak Project. And you know, of course, I can't find it now. Um, but the book was, uh, let me get all this. The book was on. Um, uh, this this interpreter, um, he's Italian, and he was asked to come to the Vatican to do some uh, translations. Uh, so it wasn't an interpreter, I'm sorry, a translator. Um, and so he came to uh, translate these ancient texts, and what he found was disturbing. He found that the Bible was completely corrupted, and so he wrote this book, um, that, uh, and I wish I can remember the title, it's killing me. Um, if I remember it, I'll put it in the detail screen, but I'm reading it right now. Um, and so now I'm not saying that we should not be reading the word. I am not saying at all that, you know, the Bible doesn't have any importance and stuff like that, not at all. We just need to make sure that we are digging and we are um, comparing it to uh, Hebrew and, and, and Greek. And, and also when you're reading the word, we need to look at the whole picture. We need to look at, okay, what was the culture of that time? What was going on at that time? Um, 
uh, some parts of scripture are more symbolic and some parts are uh, historical or both. Um, also, anytime that we read anything, we want to ask that the, the Father to guide us, you know, through his Holy Spirit. We want to be, um, you know, protected from anything that he does not want us to take in. Okay. Um, that goes the same for anything you watch on TV, anything you watch on YouTube, um, because you can easily be deceived. I don't care who you are. Any of us can. That's why it's really important to ask for wisdom and discernment and things like that. Um, let's see here. <laughs> yeah. And see, he was another one. Uh, Rex, I had trouble with week project understanding because it wasn't the right timing. Um, now I think he's hilarious. I'm watching him. Um, and he totally fooled me yesterday because I watched a video from April 1st and he was talking about, Oh, I, you know, we, there's satellite of hell. And then he takes everybody to hell, Michigan. <laughs> I was laughing so darn hard. I said, he snuckered you. <laughs> yes. The red ladder disciples. That's right. At least we can trust what Jesus told us. Right. Um, Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. And you know what, Tony, the book of John is what saved me 10 years ago. Um, cause I was, you know, I think I told you guys I was a witch. I was into witchcraft and, um, and one night I was reading this book that my friend Edie gave me and, um, and here it was new Testament and the way the book was set out, you would have never known that's what it was, especially somebody that didn't read the Bible. And um, it was the book of John. Um, I, I remember I had this little thing off to the side reading, you know, reading a prayer. But I know for a fact that I truly came to Christ that night. Um, there was a complete change in me. Um, I do know that our father with each one of us, um, can be so gentle, you know, and amazing. And he knows how each one of us need to be guided to things, you know? Um, so these 10 years have been a journey and I've had ups and downs, ups and downs, but I will never forget that night that I received Christ and the spiritual battle that happened there on because, um, I, uh, the enemy showed my face as a demon um, and all sorts of stuff. So there was a fight for my soul. Um, it's just crazy. I think if we were to really see the spiritual side or the different, the different levels of heaven or, or anything like that, or to just get a glimpse of the unseen beings that are around us, right? We would all be peeing our pants and sucking our thumbs. No kidding. There's just so much more than reality. Uh, well, this reality sh shows us, you know. Um, oh, wow. I will be, uh, it's Stephanie, right, Tony? Um, yeah, I was a solitary practitioner. So thank God I didn't get involved in any type of coven or anything like that, um, which I think would have made it even more difficult for me to get out of. But I was a Wiccan, maybe a poor excuse for, for one. I just did spells here and there, but I still opened that door. So the, I still battle with that um, because of what I did. Um, but I'm no longer his. I am Papa's. Always will be. Um, and, uh, I'll tell you, I don't want to go back. I know where I came from and I never want to go back. And I just want, I think that's another reason why I was having so much trouble with, uh, this experience, um, you know, after watching Derek Bros and stuff because of what I came from, I'm like, you know, I question everything, which is good. We should. Um, and I don't ever want to be led astray 
you know? So eh, I don't want to go back there. Christ is my all in all. And, and he has been the best thing ever in my life. And I'll tell you though, the, before I went out of work, um, because of the people, I'm not blaming them. I can only blame myself, but because of certain people I was around, that's why it's always important. Um, you know, you really can't help it with work, but I could help it by like not hanging out with them after work and stuff. But, um, the type of people you, uh, have relationships with and stuff like that can truly affect your, uh, walk. And, um, so I was actually kind of pulling away. Um, so really this was all a blessing in disguise, me being out of work, me having to go through the pain and everything. Um, like I've said several times, I don't believe in coincidences. Um, this was meant to happen. This needed to happen. Um, I needed to get close again to the father and, and stay close to the father. <laughs> um, and I'll be praying for your daughter, Tony, because, um, that stuff's real. I know some people probably make jokes and laugh about it, but it's real. And um, we only use 10% of our brain. Did you know that? So people, you know, whatever kind of thing they follow, whether it's Wiccan and stuff like that, they're tapping into certain things. And there's stuff that, that our father does not want us messing with. And that right there is definitely it. You open doors to stuff that, Hey, it, it, you're going to the rest of your life battle, you know, um, it's, it's a process. Um, let's see Christy and see that whole new age thing. Christy was what I was like concerned about when first listening to Jacob and, um, Derek, because I thought that that's what they were talking about, but that's not at all what they're talking about. But um, at first, that's why I'm going, oh, man, I'm only getting to a whole new age thing. You know what I mean? And um, so, but I think there's a lot of things that um, the enemy's twisted, too, that we, you know, um, that's why I think it's really important to do the digging. And if anything, they have really made me hungry to dig, which is great, because that's only going to be bring me closer to the Father. So that's awesome. Um, I will be praying um, against witchcraft and all. Uh, I'm going to be meeting up with my um, fellow prayer warriors, uh, two ladies that um, I get to get. We try to get together once a week, but we've all been uh, dealing with uh, a lot of spiritual battle. And so uh, we haven't gotten together in a while. But, um, you know, I was 33 when I got saved, Tony. Um uh, but, uh, we, I'm going to, I wasn't going to be able to, but I think I'm going to make sure that I do. I feel like it's really important that I get together with them this Wednesday. So, um, well, I'm going to go live still Wednesday, but I'm probably going to go live like around 12 ish my time. Uh, and I'm on the East coast. Um, and I'll be all prayed up and stuff and glowing uh, coming to you guys. So that'll be good stuff. Um, but if you guys have any prayer requests, um, I did tell this to Tony earlier. Um, if you have any prayer requests and it's anything that might be personal that you really don't want to share public, um, you can email me at soldier of the watch at gmail.com. Again, that is soldier of the watch at gmail.com. I do have a Facebook celestial Piper. Um, you can also, uh, find my group page on, um, Facebook, which is probably the better one to go to, which is soldier of the watch. And, um, and I do have a Twitter under celestial Piper. I haven't been on there in a while. Um, but again, email one more time for you guys. Cause sometimes I, I need to hear it a few times before I get it. It is 
um, soldier of the watch at gmail.com. You can send me an email, me and my ladies, we will uh, pray for whatever it is that you're requesting prayer for. And, um, and I'll tell you, I've seen incredible things through this prayer group um, because Papa, he's at the center of it and he's incredible. Um, we receive visions from him, uh, a word from him. Sometimes we have seen things um, come to fruition that we've received in prayer. Um, and I'll tell you, Papa's amazing. He is truly amazing. So um, it, is there anything before we get going that anybody wants to talk about before we go? Also, if you have any ideas of what you would like um, during the week. Oh, Allie, by all means, please do. <laughs> you know, he gave me a shout out a while back and I've still been under 200. I haven't even checked where I'm at now, but I really would like to try to get up to that uh, um, 1000 so that my channel will be shared more because I want, I really want to see healing in people. Um, and if it takes for people to see how my life's being affected by the different changes, then praise, praise the father above, because, um, that that's what I want. That's what I want. Um, in fact, um, I started doing this because the father told me, hello, Danielle, you got fibromyalgia, you know, why aren't you sharing with people about that? You know, it's fine. Do a truth video here and there, but I think you need to do this. And I, I was like, all right, Lord, I'm doing it. So, but, um, oh, that painting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course I nitpick everything, but I am changing that as well. Being positive about everything. It's good. God gave you a talent, right? Um, uh, I, I enjoy doing that for him and he, he, truly loved it. I just wish that he would let me know if he received the dragon egg I made. Um, <laughs> um, I sent him a, an egg that, you know, cause I'm pretty crafty and, um, and it was gold and uh, he, he, he didn't say anything about that, which is, you know, I'm not looking for any kind of, you know, pat on the back or anything. I just hate to find out if he threw away that box and didn't realize there was stuff in it. Uh, I made a necklace for his wife as well. So I'm just curious to see if th he got it. Because the only thing that he showed on um, Instagram was the uh, the painting when he was pulling it out of the box. And I was like, um, there was a small box on top. So hopefully um, he did get that. Um, yep, uh, Tony, don't believe in coincidences. I'm with you on that. Um, anything else before I go? There are a lot of um, Spoonies, uh, Christian Spoonies in the family. Um, um, I talked to a few myself uh, and um, we know that the reason we are the way that we are is things that they're doing to us. They, um, so I'm not surprised of the amount of people that are going through some type of chronic issue. Um, we, uh, we need to keep the LCJC family in prayer, um, with her husband, uh, having cancer. I have a friend named Tim who's got lung cancer as well, um, that like to keep, uh, in prayer. did something really strange. I would like for us to do just a few quick healing, uh, breaths, and then I'm going to close this out in prayer and, and tell you until tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. Let's close our eyes. I want you guys to take a deep breath in. Hold it for a few seconds. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out. I want you to feel that in your stomach, okay? Let all the air out until you have to breathe in again. Hold it. Two, three, four. Five, release. One more time. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. And release. 
right there. Let's go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, may your name be glorified. There are so many, Lord, that are asleep and do not know you. You who created all. You who are higher than anything, anybody. You are amazing. And we need you in every area of our lives. We pray for healing and we claim it in the name of your son, Jesus, or Yeshua, as some like to say, because there's no J in the Hebrew back at that time. Um, but Lord, whatever we know is the Christ, the Messiah. And we claim that healing over our bodies right now. We see this white light that just shines your light, Lord, from the top of our head to the tip of our toes, just radiating through our bodies right now. We are a flower, a flower that all the petals are closed, but one by one, they are opening up to the source of your healing, your light that is all consuming. May your fire, your consuming fire, radiate through us, Lord God, and purify us like silver and gold being refined in the fire. We claim this over us right now in the name of Christ. I lift up all requests that we've discussed here through chat. I lift up Stephanie to you, Lord God, that you would show her the way, that narrow path that leads to you, and that her eyes would be open, and that you would save her from the darkness and the allure of witchcraft. We claim this in the name of Christ. I pray for Tony. I pray for Allie. I pray for Christy. I pray for Nightblade, who is not in our chat today, but she is with us in spirit. I pray for Andrew Frying Pan. And um, I pray for Adam from Marfugal and his family and the safety um, that you are providing for them. I pray for the Fugel family as a whole. And I pray for those that we, um, the LCJC family, uh, my friend Tim for healing of the cancer. Um, we're rebuking that cancer in the name of Christ right now. I pray as the day goes on for my sisters here today, that they will feel the energy of your spirit through them in such an amazing, mighty way. I pray that they would know that your presence is with them every second and that they would sense that throughout their day today. I pray that the joy that they find in you will pour out of them today so that it would be contagious to those that are around them, Lord, and that they would know that they see you in their hearts and know that it comes from their Father in heaven. I can go on and on praying to you, Father, because how much I love you, but I still don't feel like I love you enough. And I just am excited for the journey that I have in you and that my sisters here have in you. And I know that our hearts are just going to swell even more in love for you. I pray all these things in Christ who gives us strength. Amen. All right, guys. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely adore and love you. And I can say that I know I love you because, well, Christ taught me that, right? He is the epitome of love. There's no greater love than one who dies for you. Um, so, guys, I'm going to head out. We went eh, about an hour and 15 minutes, but I could say here and talk to you guys forever because I love you guys so much and you're so wonderful. And remember that the kingdom is inside you. The kingdom is in here. 
He says he will never leave or forsake us. So when the enemy comes whispering in your ear to tell you, oh, you're this, you're that, you turn around and say, um, I'm the righteousness in Christ. Lies. I have victory through Christ. And you tell that enemy to get behind you. Resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. So, okay, guys. Well, it was that long, right? But it was it was definitely a great, great session today. And um, I love you guys. You're going to have an amazing day today. Don't you forget that. And I want you to take the time. If you haven't done it today, I want you to look in the mirror at yourself and tell yourself that you love you that you're beautiful, that you're an amazing creation because why? The father molded you. He's the potter. He's the creator. And he doesn't make junk, okay? All right, guys. Well, I will see you tomorrow. We will do this again around 10-ish. Um, and because sometimes for some reason, YouTube's been really weird lately and, and it's been buffering a lot and all craziness. I had trouble getting on this morning again. Um, and then Wednesday, we'll probably do it around 12-ish. So, um, okay. I love you. This is Danielle Celestial Piper of Soldier of the Watch. Peace out until we meet again. <laughs>